Hello and welcome to more Banjo Tooie! We are outside Humble Wumba's Wigwam because we are gonna go back to the van. But before we do that, guys, there's actually something I wanna talk to you guys about. And if you don't feel like hearing this, if you just wanna see the gameplay, feel free to skip ahead. But this is something that's kind of important for me to get off my chest and kind of clear the air on. So just yesterday, I received a tweet from a very well meaning fan. It, it wasn't a hater or, you know, someone trying to be negative by any, any means at all. Um, if you're hearing this, you know exactly who you are, and I, I don't want you to think that I look at you negatively, dude. It was just a, just someone kind of expressing their concerns, and I just kind of want to address it. So, the gist of what they were saying is that they feel like it seems that I'm spending so much time trying to be informative and explain things and show every nook and cranny, all those types of things, that it feels like I'm not enjoying the game or that I'm, uh, you know, not taking the time to just have fun with it, you know? And I just want to clear the air on that, because if one person says it, there's probably others that have felt that way as well. And it's natural for people to feel certain things when there's a stylistic change, because I kind of have shifted my channel from a blind channel to more of a informative walkthrough channel. And I just want to let you guys know that I have had more fun with the Let's Play channel than I have ever had before, ever since I switched to walkthrough. This is the stuff that I'm very passionate about. I absolutely love being informative. Uh, showing exploits, showing glitches, showing every nook and cranny, tricks, all this stuff, being super in-depth. That is the stuff that I consider just the meaty stuff, you know, it's super, it's, I'm super passionate about it. I really love doing it. Uh, Let's players like H.C. Bailey and Chugga Conway are my favorite Let's Players of all times, and that's kind of what they do. And it's something that I've always wanted to do, and the only reason I really haven't yet is that when I first started this channel, I wasn't sure how much time I had that I could dedicate to the channel. And simply put, doing blind stuff is usually much less time consuming. But as I've fallen more in love with the channel and as I've been able to dedicate more time to it, I've moved to this style because it's what I've always wanted to do. So yeah, I just wanted to say that I want you guys to know that I absolutely love what I'm doing and I hope you guys have enjoyed the stylistic change as well. And for those of you who don't really like the walkthrough style, hopefully the uh, weekend content, you know, still satisfies you guys. But anyways, let's actually get to some gameplay here. Thanks for listening to me rant on that, guys. Give me some feedback. Do you like the new style? All that stuff. And let's go change to a van. But hopefully, hopefully you guys uh, get where I'm coming from with all that. Anyways, let's go to a van. There's one more pay door that we have to open. Uh, last time I did mention that after we open up a switch with Mumbo, now we have to go back with the van. So it's pretty much all we have to do. I believe it was over in the space zone. Today, guys, we're gonna have some more mini games. Actually, the mini games, a lot of games I really don't care for mini games that much, but I like the ones in Witchy World quite a lot, so I'm pretty excited to uh, play some of them today. What? Why did I go in here? This was actually the wrong place. Oh my gosh, I'm the worst. Let's go back out. Um, I actually meant to go to the uh, Dodgem Dome, which is over on this side, not the Star Spinner we just went to. So let's go inside here, and over to the left, we have to actually go to the pay door because there's some doors back here that are locked off. So let's go pay real quick. The Dodgem Dome Lobby. Let's just uh, poop out a coin. Oh, let's poop it right in there. I have no idea how we managed to shoot out an out a coin with such accuracy to land it in the, the coin slot there, but we did it. So I don't think we can actually go into there as the van, can we? I actually never tried that before. No, we can't. So we're going to have to come back here as Banjo and Kazooie, but we'll do that in just a minute. Uh, let's go and transform back to them real quick. And here we go, back to Banjo and Kazooie, unfortunately. I really hate to say it because the van is my favorite transformation, but we're done with it. That is going to be it for the van for this playthrough, or at least for uh, the stage. Maybe we'll come back sometime and just chill as the van for a few minutes because we can. But uh, let's actually go back. Actually, no, 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 no. Let's drop out of here. Let's actually climb up this ladder because there's one other way to get over to the space zone. You don't just have to uh, take that warp pad. You can actually go up here and there's this little tram you can take. So let's do that. But it's kind of tricky to get up there. We have to do like a backflip grip grab onto here. So we gotta kill this guy off. Now, to get this tram over here, we actually have to go and hit that button. So we can actually jump on top of this rope, and we can do that. And uh, it looks pretty crazy to walk on top of such a tiny rope, but if you fall off, he'll actually grip grab onto it, so it's just fine. So if we go to stand down here, we can press B to experience the scenic splendid of the cable car. Right. So let's take that across. Of course, going across on this is gonna be a crazy long cinematic as usual. Although, if you take this a second or a third time, uh, the cinematics will kind of calm down there, so. That's fine. Let's just go across, and the reason I'm taking this instead of just taking the warp pad is simply, one, it puts us up top, which we actually need to be up here, and two, there's an empty honeycomb piece, so let's grab that. And I think we're gonna go do the saucer of peril. Let's see, he's gotta flip up here. Let's grab that. I think we're done for the honeycomb pieces for this stage. 
Now I want to drop. I want to drop down here, but there's now electricity surging through because we. Ow! Because we uh, activated this thing with Mumbo. Of course, as you saw, ow again. Ow! Come on, man. If you get hit, you can still come back on. I got hit by almost all of them. But after that, we can hit this shock pad, and that'll allow us to get back up pretty easily, so we don't have to deal with that shocky crud again. Let's just go hit the red switch. Now, because in Glitter Gulch Mine we saved that uh, the box thing, we can actually bring it over here now. So this is where that box comes back into play. We hit that switch to open the door, and here it comes. And inside, of course, is going to be a saucer. Oh, yeah. Let's go hop inside. Hey, buddy. Bleep, jump on board to ride the exciting saucer of peril. Let's do it. This right here, my friends, is an awesome minigame. Look at this crud. Which your world saucer of peril ride. When the crosshair appears, press left trigger or right trigger to fire at the target. Score points. Blue targets were three. Green are two and red are one. So pretty much the same score layout that we've had before. So you have to score 500 points to win. It's quite a lot. This is actually pretty tricky. You've got to be pretty careful with it. But we do have infinite eggs, so once again, I'm pretty much just going to hold down here. And we're basically going to fly through the stage and shoot at a bajillion different targets. And I want to try to aim primarily for the blue and the green. Um, honestly, go for everything, but blue and green are going to be top priority. So like right there, get the blue first. Uh, got them all? Yeah! So I actually managed to get this uh, completed, all 500, on my first try. And it's not, it's not hard to the point where you might fail it a bunch, but... You really do have to focus and try your best to really do good. It's not one you can just kind of lollygag along with and expect to get 500 points. Like all the other minigames, very, very easy. This one, not too bad, but you do actually have to try. Now, last episode I mentioned that Pancho kazooie Nuts and Bolts has a version of the Saucer of Peril. And let me tell you, that crud is really hard. Um, because in that game, you have something beyond a jiggy. You have a thing called a trophy. And basically what that requires is getting a really good score. And with that particular saucer of peril, it's hard to the point where you basically have to memorize where every single little point thing spawns so you can always shoot for the highest points. And even once you've memorized it, it is still hard. Like, it's pretty challenging. It, I think it took me like over an hour the first time I was doing it to actually get the trophy on that. Not that the trophy's required. You never, you never need the trophy to beat the game. It's just one of those things where if you want to get everything, you know, you got to... Gotta get that trophy. But anyways, enough about nuts and bolts. I actually, well, I guess <laughs> talking about it a little bit more, but I mentioned that I might do a nuts and bolts let's play in the last, uh, in the comments of the last video, and some of you guys actually want us to see it, which is kind of exciting. And I think that some people might like seeing me do that, specifically because I've mentioned before, nuts and bolts is one of my favorite, if not my favorite game of all time. I absolutely adore it. Um, and a lot of people hate it, so I think people just want to see a Let's Play of it from an actual positive perspective, you know? So I, I probably will put that together at some point, you know? I've always been interested in it, and if there's enough interest from you guys, heck, I'll do it, you know? So maybe later this year, or maybe next year sometime we'll do that, but... I don't really want to just uh, do back-to-back -back Banjo games. I'm sure there's people that want to see some other things as well. And I've already got my next Let's Play picked out. I don't think I'm ready to unveil it quite yet, but I think a lot of you guys already know what it is. But we got over 400 points so far. We still need to get back up over, uh, we need to get over 500 to get that Jiggy as well. If we get two different prizes, 400 gives us a Cheeto page, and 500 is the Jiggy. So I gotta be very careful here. I've only got 55 points left to get, but this stage is almost done, so I've gotta do my best here. Like I said, I've kind of been lollygagging along, and you can't do that too much with this one. Let's get as many blues as we can. Okay, we need like 20 more points. Come on. 10 more. 10 more. Come on. We're just about done. Three points. Come on. This is the end. This is the end. Come on. Yes, we got it. We got the three-pointer right there. And actually, we got a little bit more than... Okay, it wasn't as close to done as I thought. I legit thought we were just about to pull into the end there. But yeah, we're... This is where it ends. It's in Area 51, so... Okay, I, I was freaking out over nothing. We have way more than 500. But there we go. That is a very fun minigame. Pretty long. It probably uh, gets a little bit tedious, but I have a lot of fun with it. So here we get two rewards. And I guess it makes sense that you get two prizes for this, considering how, just how long it was. But yes, Cheeto Page and a Jiggy. Let's pick up both of those. Uh, you know what? I have no desire to... Oop, no desire to beat my best score there. Let's just go ahead and grab that Cheeto Page. We're up to five now, so we can get another cheat if we wanted to. We'll do that at some point. But for now, let's go inside the Star Spinner. This one, not exactly a mini game. It's more of just a, a platforming section. 
But since we got that activated with Mumbo, I think we did. I hope it saved. I, I definitely activated that with Mumbo last time, but I'm not sure if it actually saved that I did that. If this goes up... Oh no, dude, it didn't save that I uh, activated it with Mumbo last time. Because I did turn off my Xbox between recordings, so I'm gonna go activate this with Mumbo, and I'll meet you guys right back at this spot. Actually, you know what? Since we are Mumbo for just a minute, someone in the comments said that I should take Mumbo into Humbo's Wigwam, and I want to see what that does. Let's go see if it actually does anything. If we go interact with the two. Oh, it does! I had no idea, dude! That's awesome! Mumbo not welcome. Leave now or be in big heap trouble. I guess that's all that happens. Can I talk to her or anything? Get transformed? Uh, Mumbo, get out of pool! <laughs> Am I, like, dirtying up your pool? Let's go talk to her. Hello? Uh, Mumbo, not welcome. Okay. So I guess that's what happens if you bring him in here. Thank you so much to whoever commented that. I never even thought to try to bring him in there. Things are now properly activated, so let's try that one again. You can see these star spinners actually kind of glowing a little bit, which means it is good to go. Hey, let's not get killed by that guy. Let's just, uh, wreck him. I could use the health right now, actually. Kind of took some damage there. So if we step on top of these, they'll just kind of lift up, and we have more to jump on, so we have to jump between all these. Now, you got to be careful here, because the higher up you are, the more damage you will take if you fall. And we could very well just die, considering I'm not at full health right now. So right here, I want to get up on top of this, get that jiggy. Come on. Oh, yeah. Now let's see if I can safely land back on top of this. Now here's a trick I want to show you guys to avoid fall damage. If you do a ground pound and then fall down, you take no fall damage for some reason. So just ground pound and then have the little bounce off the ground. Just uh, move off the edge and you should be totally safe. I don't know why that happens, but it does, so it's very convenient. Now let's head up to the Dodgem Dome. We have some more mini games, And this one's kind of like the kickball tournament in that we have three rounds to go through. But we're not exactly going to be playing kickball. I actually think this one's pretty fun, so let's get to it. So this is the Dodgem Challenge, one versus one. So we're basically in some bumper cars right now against some alien looking dudes. And they want us to leave their Twinklies alone for some reason. So we have to collect 60 points worth of Twinklies. Now it's pretty much the same as always. Red is one point, green is two points, blue is three. So all we have to do is drive around here and pick up some things while this guy is trying to basically stop us. He's trying to bump us out of the way. Now the first round here, very easy. I mean, this guy can't do crud to stop us. The worst that can happen is he can maybe pin you against the wall, but really I'm not too worried about it. I'm just going to get up to the 60 points I need and then we'll fast forward through the rest of this. So we're almost done here. I've gotten as much as like 90 points out of this before, so you can really get way more points than you need. There you go, we got 60. Yeah. Hooray! Hmm, not bad. You've beaten game one with it with 80 points. Alright, let's go try the second challenge. Now, the way that the challenges change, basically, is they're going to have more guys against us. So, the first challenge was the one versus one challenge. This one is two versus one. Things are starting to get a little bit more tricky at this point. However, they do do something quite nice for you, which is... Uh, which one's the gas pedal? These guys are not too experienced, are they? But they do make it a bit easier because this time we only need 50 points instead of 60. So, the bumpy guy is more difficult. The points we have to get, not as difficult. So, that makes it still not too bad. Once again... Uh, really the only thing they can do is trap you in the corner. If you're just running away from them like this, it's going to be just fine. Now that there's two of them, though, getting trapped in the against the wall or in the corner is a very real concern. So if there's a, if there's a Twinkly that's, like, stuck in the corner and they're chasing you, honestly, probably just ignore it. It's, it's not worth it because while you, you can get free from their trap, it might take a little while. But anyways, we got our points. Let's just fast forward. I got almost as many points that time as I did the first round. That's kind of crazy. But there is still the third challenge. As you can probably uh, put together, the third challenge is just going to have three guys. Let's just go inside. Oh man, we got purple dudes, yellow dudes, red dudes. All of their laughs almost sound like Jinjos, but not quite. Wait, do Jinjos even laugh? I, <laughs> I'm not sure actually. You're in for a real ramen this time, pal. Oh jeez. Well, my game's running on NTSC. It's not a, a PAL region game. Let's see, you collect 40 points. So yes, this time we only need 40 points. Although it's almost impossible to never get stuck. Yeah, you can see right away, they've got me trapped. Get out of there. Come on, Banjo. There we go. Yeah, it's pretty much, you're going to get trapped at some point. Now, we do have a lot of time, so we can wiggle back out of things. And we only need 40 points, so it's still not too hard. But you can see these guys are going nuts on me right now. But we already almost got the points we need. And there we go, 40 points. So 
Fast forward. <laughs> Hooray, no, you've beaten game three with 44 points. So that time I kind of just messed around instead of trying to get all the points, but yeah, we got that taken care of. Now, one thing that's a little bit uh, unfortunate is this one only gives you one jiggy, even though you had to do three rounds. But guys, we are almost done with Witchy World. There is only one thing left to do. I think. Let me go make sure I've actually done everything. Uh, I know these episodes have been kind of long, but I don't know. Do you guys like if I make the episodes longer and we actually get everything taken care of within... Uh, I guess I have some notes to get still. I don't know where those are. But do you guys like the longer episodes? Because I, I, I feel like if I were to split things up more, I'd spend like an entire week, like five episodes, just in one stage, you know? Where if I kind of make them a bit longer, I can still finish it in like three, so I don't know. But yeah, I'm not sure where those notes are that I missed. I'll, I'll have to look for those in a bit. But for now, let's just go inside here. Let's go talk to Mr. Dude Dude. Big top interior. Let me see your tickets. So, oh, okay, that's a little inappropriate. Why are you just asking me for my tickets, dude? But yeah, since we have the four tickets, we can go inside, do a fight, or something. I, I, I didn't mean to spoil it, guys. This is definitely not a boss fight. The thing inside there with grenades and eggs, uh, or, and feathers and crud, that's definitely not a boss fight. And also, you might have noticed that was Kanga. He was from the first stage in Banjo-Kazooie, so he kind of makes a little cameo right there. So perhaps we're supposed to sit on this big lump on the ground, or the floor, yes. That definitely looks like a chair. Good call, Kazooie. Why does it have a little dingle dong? What the heck? Hello. Oh no, it's <laughs> it's evil. Who would have guessed? Yes, I don't know how he just got inflated right there, but he did. Oh dear, not more intruders. Well, I'll show you who's boss. See how big and strong. Yep. Well, I think that we could probably deal with him. I mean, we've got grenade eggs and feathers and crud all over the place. Also, we have homing cheat codes, which come in very handy for this. If you guys ever have any trouble with this boss, go turn on the homing cheat code. I know I'm kind of abusing it, but hey, it's in the game. I'm gonna use it. It's not that hard without it. It's just, it helps. Anyways, let's go ahead, switch to the grenade eggs. That's what we have to use to actually hurt him. That's why there's gosh dang grenade eggs all over the stage. And we just have to go and hit his patches. This guy's name is Patches. We gotta hit those patches, his weak spot. However, after we hit him once, he's actually going to spawn an enemy that's going to try to punch us out of the ground. But he's also going to spawn some red feather fly pads. So we can go use that and start shooting from the air because we did get the ability to shoot from, from the air from jam jars. So that'll come in handy. Let's just get up in the air. And the first thing I want to do is actually go away, try to get some distance from him. Then we can turn back around. Let's get some height as well. And let's just start firing away. Let's see if we can uh, hit some of these patches. My aim is terrible. Wow! Even the homing cheat code's not enough to help my terrible aim. Gosh dang. Okay, if, you would, if you'd home in on his actual patches and not towards his gosh dang belly button, that'd be fantastic. I'm down to just nine eggs already. Uh, if we need to at any point, I can just land and uh, get some more eggs, but I'm gonna try not to have to do that immediately. Okay, let's just... Uh, come on, shoot his gosh dang stinking butt! Okay, he's down to seven patches. You know what? I think at this point we're probably gonna want to... Drop down here and get some more eggs. Let's do that. I guess we can grab some feathers as well. And back into the air we go. The eggs are going to keep respawning, so just honestly just fire away. Um, I wouldn't really worry too much about wasting anything. Oh no, we just... Oh, I ground... I didn't ground pound. I dove right at the ground right there. This is not going so well. I'm kind of embarrassing myself right now, but that's all right. Uh, this is a pretty tough fight. Um, probably one of the two toughest in the game, I would say. Let's get some more height this time. Oh, he's shooting those balls at us. Get away from me, dude. I do not appreciate getting balls chucked at me. Or I guess barfed at me in that case. Uh, okay, we got one of the patches. Uh, I'm just trying to unload grenade eggs on this guy. Okay, we got another one. Can I get that one as well? Yeah, two to go. Two to go. Uh, only seven eggs right now before I have to land. Let's see if I can at least get the one on. Yeah, we got it. Okay, one left. Can I get this with just five eggs? Where is that last patch? We gotta get some distance so we can actually see where it is. And it looks like it's right on his tushy, right next to that, uh... Right next to his tail. And he's stopping! Why is he stopping? Oh, giving us that free shot! We got him! Patches is defeated! Uh-oh, looks like trouble! Oh, and he shrinks. I don't know how that works, but he's just gonna take a little fart break right here. And hopefully we get a jiggy! We do! Hooray! So that is pretty much it, guys, for Witchy World. Let's go and grab that. 
Um, I do have 25 notes I'm missing, and I genuinely have no idea how I missed them, so I guess I'll look for those real quick. We'll grab those, and then uh, we'll get out of here. You know what I'm thinking might have happened, guys, is maybe some of the notes that we got last time did not end up saving because the mumbo thing didn't save as well. So let me go look back at some places we already got. And we also need to head to Madam Grunty's little tent, so we'll do that in just a minute, too. Oh, first off, there's these five notes I forgot to get right at the start of the level. Whoops! And considering I'm still missing 20 notes, I bet you it's the treble clef from the van door. So let me try that real quick. Ah, yes, indeed, it was the treble clef. So I did get this last time you guys saw me get that, but just had to get that again real quick. So let's go back to Banjo and Kazooie, and let's go do the Madam Grunty tent before we call Witchy World completed. So the way that this works is you basically just go inside and you'll get a random result. She might hurt you, she might give you some more health. There's a lot of things she can do. Let's see what she does here. You win extra fire eggs, so she can just give us some goodies. Now we want to keep going back inside, and the thing is, after a while, she'll actually close the, the, the cover thing, which is not the best. You win extra fire eggs again. We did not need those. So that's what happens. So basically what I have to do is just wait until this opens back up, and then keep trying until we get what we want. Now, that's kind of why I didn't do it before, is we would have only been able to go in once. I guess I should have done that before, but anyways. I'm going to keep trying, and I'll show you guys my results. We win some red feathers. Yay. Extra grenade eggs. Oh. Actually, I kind of needed that. Sick. Basically, every time she closes her doors, instead of just waiting around, I'm actually going to go back out of the stage, then go back in. And that seems to open back up, so we'll keep trying. Oh, no. We win a beating, dude. So, yes, you do have a chance to get damaged just going in here. Kind of sucks, but oh well. Oh my gosh, she's giving me three beatings in a row. I'm gonna die. A fourth beating in a row. Maybe I'm actually doing something wrong here, guys. I've done this before. I've just gone in and it worked. Uh, what I'm trying to get her to do is say, Fortune smiles upon you, and it gives you a, uh, a little special thing. If you guys know if I'm doing anything wrong, definitely fill me in. I might have to come back another time. Because I'm about to die. So you know what, guys? We're, we're going to call things here. Give me some info. Let me know if there's actually a trick to getting hurt to give you the fortune smile upon you. Or if my luck is just terrible. Because I've been doing this for about 20 minutes straight. So anyways, guys. I will see you next time. Thank you so much for watching. Take care.